Okay, everybody, welcome back. This is going to serve as an ancillary video to the setup and solution uh, ANSYS videos for the ART class. In this one, I'm going to show you the importance of picking the correct model and some of the results that will come if you do so incorrectly. And then we'll also talk about some of the consequences either way. <coughs> First, uh, as you can see here, I have some linked fluent solutions. If you're doing uh, multiple solutions with the same geometry and mesh, you can just start, you just drag one from here, start it over here, create a standalone system, and then you can simply drag one of these boxes onto the next one, and it'll just keep the same geometry and the mesh. Then you just go from the setup, and you can save yourself a lot of time in the production. <coughs> so what I did with these three is they're all ran at uh, 320 meters per second, which is approximately 0.93 Mach, so right in the uh, transonic region. Uh, I ran it, uh, I believe this one's with an SST, we'll check when we get there. This one with a laminar, and this one with a spallard armaris solution. So we'll just see differences in the resolution. So let's bring it up. So these already ran, so that's why I was able to bring up the solution directly. Still takes a minute to load though. So, like before, we'll just look at the contours. We'll look at pressure contours this time. They might be more direct at showing us what we're looking for. So here we have it. This is the SST4 equation model. Double check that. Yeah, SST4 equation. So we'd expect this to be the most accurate in this transonic region. This one did take uh, slightly long, significantly longer actually than the others to run. Uh, they both, they all solved in approximately the same number of iterations, but these iterations took two to three times as long each. So just looking at this generally, we have uh, high pressure at the nose, uh, low pressure over the wings where there's high speed, and then a transition from uh, low pressure to high pressure somewhat sharply towards the back of the wing. So that's that. Uh, we'll try to keep this open and look at the other ones. This one is the laminar solution. It's going to take a minute to open again. You might have trouble opening multiple uh, windows of ANSYS like I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm able to do it on the remote desktop because I should be the only one on here right now so I can use multiple licenses. But if there's more than one person at once, that might make it more difficult. So just to check, I am using the viscous laminar solution here. Same as before. Now at first gla glance, this looks similar. But right away, you can see there's pretty some, there's also some pretty stark differences. The pressures here on the leading edge of the wing are much lower and much more spread out, and the transition from uh, low pressure to high pressure is much less defined and more spotty. Uh, so, again, uh, we'd expect the SST model, the first one I brought up, to be more accurate in this case, and uh, might be so because you'd expect some supersonic flow over the wing. Uh, the sharp transition we saw before could be due from a shock that the laminar solution is able to produce or any other number of factors. Um, another thing to point out about this laminar solution is while running it, the residuals didn't converge nearly as much as they did with the SST model. I actually had to stop running it because uh, the residuals just stopped changing. The biggest issue is with the continuity equation it stopped uh, about at the level of 3 to the times 10 to the negative 2 when we were looking for at least 1 times 10 to the negative 3. So about 30 times larger residual than we hoped for. Keep this one open too so we can quickly switch back and forth. And finally the Spallard Armaris. So this is a turbulent solution but only one equation and not designed for transonic or supersonic flow. This one as well, the Spallard Armaris, also had an issue with the residuals. That it wasn't as bad as with the laminar, but it was still sitting and feeling worse than with the uh, SST model. Just 
display it here. So again, uh, similar in shape, different than the laminar. Uh, if I can, I'm gonna try and compare these side by side with the SST. So here's Spoiler Maris on the left, and the SST. Try to bring it up on the right. So, again, uh, this one's interestingly enough, pretty much in between the laminar solution and the SST solution. It has a smaller region of low pressure than the laminar region, but not as uh, small as on the SST. And a uh, somewhat sharp transition, maybe starting to pick up some of the supersonic effects, but much more clearly defined on the SST. So, we can also pull up and look at it in, uh, vi in velocity too, instead of pressure. See if we're seeing anything different there. Uh, let's do velocity magnitude. Not sure why that's. Oh, it's a wall effect, so everything's zero. Let's try it. See if I can get it just off of it. Might not be able to uh, quickly just in the solution pane. Um, yeah, let's just go back to pressure. Since it's able to read the static pressure through the boundary layer, so we're able to see it more clearly. And it shows us what. Uh, got the wrong area selected. It shows us what we're trying to see just quickly the differences between the uh, choices we can make with regards to the model. Yep, there we go. So again, uh, what we're trying to show here is just the um, importance of selecting the best model. Uh, you can clearly see that you'll get different answers. Depending on your situation, it might not be a huge thing, but for something like this where you're looking at transonic flow, uh, pressure differentiations like this are going to affect how your aircraft flies uh, pr potentially pretty significantly. So you want to ensure that you're picking the best model for your solution. Uh, it does come at a cost, as I mentioned earlier. The SST model ran significantly slower, but it's better to wait to get a good answer than hurry to get a bad one. Uh, quickly, I also have some post-processing open. Uh, this just shows the uh, this is pressure again, just slightly off the bottom of the aircraft, so you can see some of the contours of how the pressure is uh, affected by the aircraft. If I go to contour 1, I can also show the velocity. Velocity U. So you can see how the air is affected. Um, we can actually change the plane height as well to see it at different areas. This is with the SST model, I believe. Um, so hopefully our best solution. So moving farther away, it, uh, it's more uniform, obviously. And then if we go slightly above it, you can see the effect above it. Uh, some pretty sharp changes moving very fast right over the top of the wing and then slowing down uh, farther away. Again, this is just to show you the effects. Not as important as what we were talking about earlier with the selecting the best model, but hopefully you guys got something out of this video and are looking forward to using this in projects in the future. Thanks again for watching.